Hello, my name is Kevin Clay, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions Incorporated. Today, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the time series plot. Uh, in this introduction, we will be using Minitabs version 20. We will also be using Minitabs Assistant from the uh, menu bar. Uh, Minitabs, Minitabs Assistant makes statistical analysis simple. Uh, as you'll see in the introduction, Minitabs Assistant kind of takes the heavy lifting out of doing statistical analysis. So you'll see here on the uh, screen, uh, uh, this is again Minitab uh, version 20. Uh, we are using data from an example we use in our Green Belt and Black Belt course. This example follows a company called uh, PBJ Inc., which is peanut butter and jelly. Incorporated. It's a fictitious, uh, fictitious company. Um, we are actually in the process as green belts of trying to solve a problem in this company. The problem being that we have uh, we have production costs to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which we make thousands. We are a company all over the domestic United States. Uh, and uh, our cost per sandwich, uh, there's a highly variable cost. Uh, and and the, the mean of that cost is above where we want it to be. So it's costing us more to make sandwiches than we want to. Of course, you know, it's hitting our bottom line, it's decreasing our margin. So in, in this example, what we're looking at, uh, we're looking at, do we have an effect uh, on something over time? All right. Uh, in this case, defects. All right. So we're looking at uh, a defective uh, sandwich is one maybe that um, uh, costs us too much. All right. So we're looking to, to say, uh, are we decreasing that cost? And, and do we have an uh, impact on that over time during our domain process, our, six, our Lean Six Sigma process? So we're going to use something called the time series plot to uh, understand what our impact on that sandwich is all throughout the domain process, because we can make changes anywhere in the domain. There's always the potential for quick wins in any stage. <clears throat> so if you don't have a way to track um, what's happening to, to that cost, then, then you're just make, it's your opinion that something has changed. All right, we have to have some data to track it. And the time series plot is a good way to visually see what the impact uh, is on that as we track it. So we're gonna go up to the assistants. All right, uh, the assistant, there's lots of great tools here. Uh, we're gonna use graphical analysis. Uh, we are then gonna move into time series plot. <clears throat> now, in this time series plot, there, there's two ways to do this, but I'm, I'm in this case, I'm just going to show you one way because I, I, I find this is the most uh, beneficial use of this tool. All right. So uh, it gives you the ability to um, have your Y data and Y data is what you're measuring. In, in this case, we're measuring defect percentage. It says all Y data is in one column, or it says Y data is in more than one column. Uh, I, I uh, have never used this function for this tool. Uh, I've only used all data are in, uh, in one column. So I, I'm gonna stick to what I know. All right, our Y data, <clears throat> our Y data in this case is defect percentage. So what we're looking is we're looking at tracking um, are we making a, a impact on defects percentage over time, right? <clears throat> uh, we also have a categorical X for grouping. So, you know, I, I might group this by, uh, I might group this by sites or by departments, all right? So this, uh, this could be, I could be looking at three different departments and tracking the impact of defects over time over three different departments 
to see which ones I'm having an, an effect on. Uh, now you could start all of these at the same time, <clears throat> meaning I could have three different departments that I'm tracking all at the same time. So I would have three different uh, time series plots. Well, all right, or I could have I could have this on tracking not three different departments, but maybe I'm tracking different parts of the year, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth, fourth quarter. Uh, and so I can break that up into stages to see, you know, is, is there an impact uh, in each of these quarters? Okay, but in this case, I'm not doing that. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm gonna leave that X column out. In this case, all I'm really doing is I'm really tracking to see if there is an impact uh, on, on defect percentage over time. So let's go ahead and hit okay. All right, bring this up to the front. <clears throat> so you look at this and you say, all right, looks like I've, I've got uh, you know, a, a, a slope downward. So it looks like I'm having an effect on, uh, on defects over time. But the problem is, the problem is, if you look down here um, on, on this axis, uh, you'll see it says index. I don't know if this is uh, per minute, per second, per, per day, per week, per year. I, I, I don't know what the time series is on this. So uh, there's a way to change that. All right. And, and that, that isn't actually within the tool. So we, we've got to do some formatting here. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on one of these numbers in the index, all right? And when we do that, these the, the index, you'll see these little squares over the numbers. And you'll see up here under add item, it'll say X scale. Uh, and all of a sudden, this little uh, uh, edit function will uh, uh, will be become visible. So. Let's go ahead and click on this. Uh, looks like a, a paint can and a paint brush. All right, and this gives us a lot of um, functionality to change the scale, change the time, change the uh, the attributes, all kinds of stuff we can do. Through. But in this case, we're really looking at time. We're, we're looking at changing the time scale. Now. Um, there's lots of different ways you can set up the time scale. Uh, you can set up, set it up on certain times uh, of the calendar. You can set up for, for certain hours, certain days. But I, I will tell you, as, as long as I've been in this methodology, I, I've never used those tools. Uh, I'm not saying they aren't, uh, they aren't useful. Uh, but when you go into a company, Really, you're going to be looking at data that most likely comes from a database. Okay, and that database it could be an ERP system, financial system, any kind of a database. Uh, and I, in a in a previous life, was uh, CIO of a manufacturing company, so uh, I have a little bit of uh, a knowledge of data mining. All right, and and the back end of uh, different systems. So most of your databases. Uh, when they commit a row of data, all right, they put a timestamp on it. So that timestamp is usually gives you, you know, uh, uh, the date and it gives you the time down to the second. So we can use that to really understand, you know, what what's happening uh, or what the date range of something is or, or what what the uh, actual date of that that row is. All right. So in this case, uh, when I use this tool, I usually uh, come down to timestamp and then I, I go out and I find that stamp. So in this case, it's going to be date. All right. So when I, when I uh, click on that date, I hit OK. And then now, now I've got a, a date range that uh, I can now follow, you know, the kind of range that the defect percentage has been uh, affected in. All right, you can also hover over each of these uh, and get the uh, actual data and the uh, date time. Okay, so let's hit okay here. 
All right, so that is the uh, time series plot. Uh, again, my name is Kevin Clay. I'm one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma uh, Development Solutions. If you are, uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at uh, K Clay. That's K C L A Y at Six Sigma DSI.com. I will put that down in the uh, uh, description in the information uh, for this YouTube video. And everybody uh, have a wonderful day.